Hey there, PPLM fans, followers, and family. This is Katie back with another video on, you guessed it, aeration and seeding. We're not done with this service yet, so we've got some information for you today that covers questions that we've been hearing a lot from our clients as well as potential new clients that we haven't touched on yet in any of the videos that we've done so far. We're gonna be talking about whether or not to collect your aeration cores, whether or not to put straw down on top of your seed, as well as how late is too late to actually do that service and when you can expect to hear that you're scheduled. That's kind of the hot topic this year because we've had such a warm season. So stay tuned for the whole video to be sure that if you have a question that we haven't talked about yet, it's getting answered here. And if we don't touch on a question that you've had, comment below. Any comment that you post down there, we're going to be replying to to make sure that you have your questions answered. And while you're at it, go ahead and ask the question about fall services in general that you're curious to know about. By next month, we're gonna post another Q&A video, a good FAQ topic, so that you can have any of your questions that you might have about leaf service or winterizer fertilizer, anything like that answered from the best source that you can find. Of course, go ahead and subscribe as well. You wanna stay up to date on our videos, so be sure to ring that bell, follow us, make sure that you're gonna see your next videos because we're posting something every week. Stay tuned and we're gonna hit you with some FAQs. No, please, please don't, because it's just going to end up being a waste of your time and resources trying to haul away all of those cores. They're just plugs of soil from your yard. There's nothing harmful about them, and they're actually full of nutrients that your yard is going to be needing as that baby grass starts to grow in. What's best to do is just leave them alone, pretend that they're dog poop to freak out your kids if you want to, but otherwise let them be because they're gonna break down on their own after a couple of weeks of rainfall and watering. This is actually something that we talk about more in our seeding aftercare video that you can find here. We also go into how to care for your seed after it's put down, so be sure to check that out when this video is over. This is one of my favorite questions because it gives me the chance to sound like a know-it-all. We use a triple blended turf type tall fescue seed that is certified blue tag. But what does all of that mean? Triple blended means that it's got multiple different strains in it of the same type of grass that are almost like different breeds or subgroups. So they're backing each other up in case one gets knocked out by disease or something like that. You still have two there in the, in the lawn. The turf type tall fescue part is just the part that says what kind of grass it is. Turf type tall fescue is what is most popular and common in Virginia because it's a cool season grass that's pretty hardy in poor quality soil that we see so frequently in the average yard. Blue tag, this is the important part, that means that this seed has a guaranteed germination success rate of a very high quality. So if you're following your watering instructions properly, you are certain to see some growth coming in from the seed. It's not dead seed right from the get-go, which is very, very important. The other side of that blue tag certification is that it is 0% weed seed. This is obviously extremely important as well because if you're paying for weed control in the spring, you don't want to undo it by planting weeds in the fall. If you have more questions about this, just let us know. The actual, basically, brand of seed that we use on a year-to-year -year basis changes depending on what's actually going to be better and more affordable that season so that it doesn't end up impacting your rates. We're not married to any one thing. We use what's going to be working best, and that's one of the keys to our success. We don't put straw down on top of seed. I'm actually gonna let our fertilizer supervisor, Brandon, answer this question and tell you a little bit more about why. The main reason we don't recommend putting down straw on top of grass seed is because it can bring in a lot of unwanted weed seed that will compete with the new fescue as it tries to germinate, as well as give us other weeds to try to fight the next spring and summer when we're doing our best to make your lawn as weed free as possible. That's right. So for the most part, there's just too many costs to really justify putting straw down on top of your seed.
This is a question that we get at least a couple times every season, and we really try not to take it personally. We are doing a double core aeration as a standard. So every service, we're going in an overlapping pattern to really maximize on those cores and make sure that you're getting plenty of plugs pulled out of the soil. However, when you factor in that double pass, as well as the amount of times that we're going over with a spreader, putting down your seed, your lime, and sometimes even a starter fertilizer, that's a lot of traffic that's going into the yard. So in those open areas, you might see, like in the picture here, that there are going to be areas where there's a tire pass that's basically mushing those cores back into the ground, right next to an open spot where you can see those cores coming out evenly. Even in the places where the tires have gone over and those cores are being smushed back down, that does not mean that your service has been compromised. It's still just as effective. Those plugs were getting pulled out. It's just kind of breaking them back down and returning them a little bit to the soil faster than they would be from just watering or anything else. Now, of course, there are going to be tight corners in your yard that don't get aerated just because we can't fit a machine into those areas. Like in the ditch where it starts to become really tight, you have to turn that corner. There's going to be a triangle where it's not completely getting filled in, but that's okay too. I'm going to go to Brandon again so he can explain to you what the most important thing is about your aeration seating service rather than just pulling those cores out. Aerating every square inch of your yard is not the most important thing. The most important thing is seed to soil contact, which you get just by throwing the seed on top of the ground. As long as it's all watered properly and stays moist, the grass seed will still germinate even if it's not down in any kind of a hole. Yep, and that's just kind of common sense. There's plenty of places that don't get aerated ever that have plenty of success with growing grass. Aeration definitely serves a purpose, but it's not going to be dependent upon the grass falling into the cores to be able to come up and be successful. Timing and scheduling is tricky for aeration seeding. It's one of the hardest parts of it. It's actually not performing the service, but rather planning it and making sure that everybody clicks together in the right time frame each year. Generally, the rule of thumb has always been that aeration seeding should be done around the weeks surrounding the state fair in Virginia, which usually is the last week of September and the first week of October. That gives you from about mid-September to mid-October. September 15th to October 15th has always been a really good rule of thumb. But there are more and more years like this one where we have unseasonable temperatures leading into fall. Just two days ago, and it's about to be October, we had a day that was in the 90s, in the mid-90s, and that's just way too hot for aeration and seeding. Fescue seed does not like to germinate in air temperatures that are not within 60 to 75 degrees. 60 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit is perfect for germination, and anything hotter is just going to let your seed sit. Anything colder can risk that baby seed getting a little too stressed out. So you end up having this really kind of sticky time frame. We try to hit it as best as we can. So in a year like this one, 2018, where we've got a delayed season, we're actually going to be seeing the most success in October. So in this situation, going until mid-October isn't going to be really good enough. We're going to actually be going into late October when you still have plenty of opportunity to get that grass seed down successfully. With that in mind about it being a late season, you want to be sure not to winterize your irrigation system too early. If there's a good chance that your seed is still going to be growing into late October, early November, you don't want to winterize that system until late November at the earliest, if at all possible, because you're going to need to water that seed in. A lot of irrigation companies will try to encourage you to winterize as early as October, and that's just way too soon because if your grass is still growing, it's still needing some amount of water input. So be careful with that. Yeah, that's really, really important. No, sorry, unfortunately, for the most part, that's just not how it works. Because you've chosen to go with one of the most professional and well-established companies in the area for your aeration seeding services, we have a very specific way in which we schedule everybody to provide for the maximum efficiency, as well as to make sure that everyone that we take care of is able to get their service done within the right window of time. As a result, we plan these services out weeks in advance and have everybody scheduled for kind of tentative dates, and then we really lock those in a week ahead. That week ahead is when we give you notice so that you have plenty of time to prep your yard. A lot more you can learn about that in this video right here. But that way you have enough head heads up and then we give you a call a day ahead to let you know for sure that that's when that date was locked in. 
if it's a situation where we're expecting that you're going to be, you know, maybe toward the end of October this season, but you really wanted to get done in early to mid October, we can put you on a tentative wait list if you let us know. There's no guarantee with it, but if somebody in your same neighborhood cancels or something last minute when we had already had them scheduled, we'll try to slide you in if you're sure that your yard is ready. Again, check out that video to learn more about our yard prepping technique in terms of getting your yard ready for service. And remember to just stay calm. We're still going to take care of you in an appropriate window of time. You're not going to have to wait until November or December for your service. We're just trying to be as efficient as possible. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this whole video on aeration and seeding FAQs. If you have a question that we didn't answer in this video that you were curious about, or if you've got a question regarding fall and end of the year fertilizer, aeration, seeding, or general lawn care sort of things, be sure to comment below. We love to hear your feedback. We love to hear any questions that you have, and we're going to be replying to everybody who comments here. Of course, as always, be sure to like and subscribe. Stay in touch. Be sure that you're going to be getting updates from us. And of course, have a picture-perfect day.